The federal government has issued a proposed rule on health reimbursement arrangements. This comes out of some federal agencies, Department of Health and Human Services, Labor, and the Treasury Department. This was authorized by that October 2017 executive order that prioritized association health plans, short-term insurance plans, and health reimbursement arrangements. That health reimbursement arrangement we haven't heard much about for the last several months because the attention had been on association health plans and short-term health plans. Final rules have already been issued on those and states have already been trying to figure out how they could have short-term health plans available for sale right away. Now we're getting to the point where the rules are being finalized on health reimbursement arrangements and the first step in that is to issue a proposed rule, then to seek public comment, and then issue a final rule. So the proposed rule has just been issued. What is a health reimbursement arrangement? They're called HRAs. Well, they're an IRS-approved employer-funded tax advantage plan. They're appealing because employer contributions and employee reimbursements from that health reimbursement arrangement are not subject to income or employment taxes. They're funded solely by employer contributions and employers reimburse employees directly only after that employee has a, an approved medical expense that can then be reimbursed. Where does this whole thing come from, the whole construct? Well, it's not in the Affordable Care Act and it's not in the tax code. This comes to us solely out of IRS guidance, first in 2013, then in 2015. It has been traditionally pre-tax, which was allowed, even though that seems like it might conflict with some health laws, that's been allowed because it is uh, up to now been subject to group health plans. So before this proposed rule, a uh, health reimbursement arrangement complied with the IRS guidance only if it was coupled with an Affordable Care Act compliant group health plan. So if those two things work together, you met the IRS rules and the Affordable Care Act rules. Now, this wasn't allowed for someone that was buying individual insurance. So premiums and uh, cost sharing in the form of out-of-pocket costs like deductibles could not be set aside pre-tax and then used um, to buy individual insurance. And that's what this proposed rule is changing. So health reimbursement arrangements when coupled with group health plans before were allowed and when used with individual plans were not allowed. This proposed rule creates a whole new arrangement of a health reimbursement arrangement. The first one is what is called an integrated HRA with individual coverage. So it allows for the first time, in so doing, it's loosening the rules. It allows for the first time an integrated individual plan with a health reimbursement arrangement. The second kind of plan construct that was created out of this proposed rule is one for um, accepted benefits, and we'll talk about that later. Let's stick on this individual health plan. This means now, under the proposed rule, that individuals could use a health reimbursement arrangement to purchase insurance on the individual marketplace. It could be used to fund premiums and out-of-pocket costs for the first time. So this is a big change and it is a dramatic loosening of the rules. And we're gonna talk about how this plays out with an employer in just a moment. Let's now pause and look at that second type of HRA that was created out of this proposed rule, and that's what's called an HRA for accepted benefits. This is if a, an employer offers a traditional group health plan to its employees, comprehensive health coverage. It can also offer an HRA for accepted benefits, and that means they could put up to $1,800 a year aside that could be used for standalone dental, could be used for COBRA premiums for continuation um, coverage, and it could be used for premiums for short-term health plans, kind of as an incentive to get people to buy those short-term health plans if a, a comprehensive group plan was also offered for employees. The employer cannot offer both types of HRAs. They can't have the integrated individual HRA available to employees and an accepted benefits HRA. It's either or. Now, an employee would be free to enroll in only the accepted benefits HRA and skip the group coverage if they wanted to under the rules. Um, affordability, of course, would depend on how much money that is contributed by the employers. Now, offering an HRA would satisfy the employer mandate by saying that we offer an individual integrated HRA at our office. We are therefore compliant with the employer mandate, which says you have to provide health insurance to your employees or you have to um, uh, suffer the consequences for not doing that. Employers can break employees into classes and offer different health arrangements to different classes of employees. So that means that your full-time employees could get comprehensive health coverage and your part-time employees, as designated as a separate class, could get 
um, uh, the, the HRA for individual integrated coverage separately. Or your seasonal employees could get the HRA for accepted benefits and comprehensive health coverage offered to them. Different arrangements can be within one company just offered to different categories as uh, specified and they have a long list of what would be eligible for classes for your, your employees. Now there are a couple other things. If you are using um, an individual integrated HRA, you don't also get marketplace tax subsidies for that private plan if you're gonna use that to set aside to buy insurance on the individual market. At least that's the way it stands now. The IRS is still expected to write a little bit more guidance on that point. Um, second, employees can opt out of a health reimbursement arrangement. If they do so, and the coverage they were offered was deemed to be unaffordable, then they could get tax subsidies in the marketplace. They could say, I was offered this insurance through work that satisfied the employer mandate, but it wasn't affordable to me, and I want, and I did not take the accepted benefits um, the, or the health reimbursement arrangement. Therefore, I want to be able to get my own tax credits as if I didn't have any insurance at all and buy a marketplace plan. So there will be a lot of details that have to be figured out and individuals have to be very organized to know what was offered to them, the affordability of what was offered to them, and then their options to calculate their income separately and see if they are eligible for marketplace plans with tax subsidies. So essentially, this is a new arrangement. It's not set in stone yet. It is a new arrangement. And as you can imagine, there are a couple little wrinkles that need to be worked out. Like so what if somebody starts a new job in the middle of the year and wants to go through and determine if they're eligible for the marketplace plan because they were just offered an HRA. And that might help with some premiums, even if it doesn't come with premium subsidies. Um, but they're outside of open enrollment. Well, the rule thought of that. The proposed rule allows for expanded special enrollment periods for those instances where someone might, for the first time, gain access to an HRA. Then they could enroll or change plans for the next 60 days from that point of which they were first deemed eligible for the HRA. So an in, in enlarged or expanded version of special enrollment periods is envisioned in this rule. Concerns. There are a couple. First of all, affordability. The details are not released yet of what that would look like, how much money individuals could set aside that could be reimbursed for premiums. And especially with the idea that you could be buying insurance in the marketplace using premiums set aside in your HRA, but still not be eligible for tax credits. It still could be people might be paying a higher amount for their, for their health insurance. Employers, this is the big fear. Employers could dump high risk, expensive employees into their HRA and therefore into the, the marketplace and keep the healthier employees for their group health plan. Um, that's a fear with any kind of new benefit arrangement that we've been seeing out of this executive order from October of 2017, Association Health Plans, Short-Term Insurance, and now the HRA arrangement, where you are essentially pulling people out of the marketplace potentially and, uh, and, or, and, and leaving the marketplace for the sicker people, more expensive people. So this is, that was another identified fear. The Fed said, no, 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 we're, we're giving people money so they can buy a marketplace plan. Well, some of the critics also say, yeah, but the odds that they're going to buy a short-term health plan are a little bit higher than buying an individual plan in the marketplace. So that's still, the devil's going to be in the details and it's way too early to tell what, how that's going to play out. But that is the large conversation that this executive order from 2017 really has Then the writing on the wall is that this is designed for the healthier and the wealthier individuals, leaving the affordable care marketplaces for the sicker individuals that end up paying a lot more for those premiums and those premiums will continue to go up. Now they gave a couple impact statements in the proposed rule, some of the figures that look out over the next 10 years. Some of them are uh, about the, the projected increase in premiums, some are about the uh, projected availability of premium tax credits. Uh, if you don't have people eligible for premium tax credits because they're using their HRA to purchase their insurance in the marketplace, then the availability of tax credits is really going to fall. In total, and this is the biggest number, is the Fed's estimated that the proposed rule would reduce tax revenue by about $29.8 billion over the next 10 years. That's a lot of money not flowing in to the federal government because of this arrangement, because this is, again, pre-tax. The money set aside for these accounts is pre-tax. So the proposed rule was published right before Halloween. Comments on the proposed rule are accepted through December 28th. You can read up on this. We're going to give you some sources where you can read the proposed rule, see if you like it or if you don't. There are mixed opinions from different employers and employees on these arrangements. 
if everything goes as the feds expect, then it will go into effect for the plan and tax years beginning on or after January 1st, 2020. There is not an immediate implementation date on this. There would have to be a lot of stuff that gets rewritten, a lot of tax rules, a lot of guidance, a lot of tax code that would have to be rewritten to take this into account. And so there's a lot of work to be done if this indeed goes from proposed rule to final rule. You can read the proposed rule. You can read the fact sheet from the Department of Labor as well that goes into a little bit more detail, and that'll help answer a lot of questions on this HRA arrangement. You can ask us your questions or send us an email at healthwatchwisconsin.org. Mm -hmm.